The fourth step is to add messages. And so we have all of the actors and the objects. At least we hope we have all of them. We can add them if we come across one that we missed. But we hope that we have all of them. And we're going to now add the messages that go between these actors and objects. So we're going to start up here, uh, interface display the login screen. And so let's see how that's going to work. That's really the customer logging or opening the app. And when they open the app, it initiates a message that goes, it actually creates an interface object, right? So a brand new interface for this customer. So we're going to get a brand new interface object. And notice that messages that create objects, uh, they go directly, the arrow goes directly into the object box. And ones that are at the top, objects that existed when the scenario began are all across the top. So this interface did not exist before the user did that. And the message that we can send is has to be a function that resides in the interface. So we can go into our, an, our class diagram and we can see the interface has two possible functions that we can call. One is display and click. And what we want is the display method. So we'll type the message is going to be display. Remember a message is a function call. And we're going to send the information that we need. What do we want to display? We want it to display the login screen. All right, so when the app first opens, a message is sent to it, an interface object is created and a message is sent to display the login screen. That display actually instigates a message that goes back to the customer. And notice I'm going to have to turn this around because I want it to go the other way. And not, one thing I want to tell you is I'm not going to put these lines right up against the lifeline because we're going to be adding execution occurrence boxes. So we need to leave some space there for the boxes to go. So I put the line I end the line, both ends of it, one whole square away from the actual lifeline. And what the interface is going to be doing now is it's going to request the login info from the user. Now notice that external users do not have a list of function calls. So we can just use something that's very informative. Uh, what they're going to do is request login information and then the customer is going to return that information. And so what they're going to be returning is the username and password. So I'm going to write that what's being returned is the username and the password. All right, so that's what it took to do this very first section, to display the interface, um, display the login screen, and the customer to log in. Required these two messages and that one return value. Then the next thing we have to do is people authenticates the login. So here, interface has the username and password, and they need to get it authenticated. And it's the people object that knows how to do that. And the message, the function that we can call in the people object is a login message. So we're going to send a message to the login object. I mean, to the people object, sorry. And the message is going to be login. And when we send that, we're going to send the username and password, which is what people will need to do that login. All right, now what is, now we need to decide is when we do a login, is anything going to be returned? So we for sure need to know whether that user is valid or not. So we need that information, but we're also going to need the customer object. So the interface is going to need which customer, because people has a whole container of persons, right? Some of them were customers and some are employees, but it has a whole container of persons. And so we're going to need to know which one is specifically related to this customer that just logged in. So really what we need it to do is to return actually the customer that is associated with that login, with that username and password. So we can assume here that it's going to return the, a customer and specifically the one that matches this user's and it's named a customer and there it is that specific object it's going to return that customer uh, and if it didn't validate then it could return a null value 
right? But but we this is this scenario actually has the customer is able to log in. All right, so now that we've got that back, now the interface knows which customer this is, which is a good thing for that interface to know because now the interface needs to call that customer object to add a transaction. So if we go to the customer object, we know that it has an add transaction method. And so that's the message that we're going to call. And here it's the interface that knows this. That right, the interface now knows the customer and it knows so it can send to that customer object. <clears throat> Notice that that customer object was not new, but that customer already existed. We're not creating a new one. But we're going to add transaction is what we're going to be sending to this customer. And there's no information that we have to send yet. We're just creating a brand new uh, transaction object. So what needs to happen here is the customer needs to add a transaction and a transaction needs to be created because this transaction object has not existed before. So notice, remember I put this down, but I didn't know exactly where it would show up. So I'm going to move it now down so it can happen here at this customer. So what this is going to do is the customer object is going to send them, is going to create a transaction. It's going to call that create method, right? So which is just a <coughs> constructor to create that transaction. And so it's going to create that. It's going to create the transaction. When you do that, what's going to be returned? <coughs> what's going to be returned is a transaction. And you know, it's just been created and the customer now needs that transaction to be added to its container. So what's going to be returned is a transaction. It's going to return a transaction and now it's going to be added to that container, right? That that container that it has a all this this container of rental transactions. This transaction is created and it's returned and now can be stored in that customer. Now, what needs to go back to the interface? So the interface asked for this trans sent the message for the transaction to be added and that transaction was created it was returned and stored in the container that the customer has for transactions and then from there it can be returned to the interface so that it can be used by the interface if there's something that needs to be added to it or called to it it'll it'll know about it and it can call up and it can call that so we're going to return the transaction now notice how uh, things go back exactly where they were called. So I really I couldn't send the transaction all the way back from here to the interface because the interface didn't call the create function, right? It returned it back to here. It, the transaction goes back to exactly where it was called from and then this message, add transaction, returns exactly where it was called and that's where it can be returned again. So here you see the path of how functions are called, how they return their values back to exactly where they were called from, and then it can be passed back again. So I want to talk a little bit about this create method. If we go into a transaction, we don't see a create method here. So this would be a constructor, and constructors and getters and setters are not listed on the on the class diagram because every object has a constructor. And so it's not listed, but we know that there is are constructors, getters, and setters. So if we need to use them, we can and send that message so that it needs to be created. And we just keep working through the list. So now it says that the interface requests the movie list. Well, who knows the movie list, right? Who knows what the movie list is? And here is the inventory. The movie inventory is the class that has this list of inventory records. Remember that each inventory record is related to a single movie. And so and it has this function, send movie list data. And that's what we want it to do. So we're going to create this message. Notice we're doing a lot of message that goes from the interface. And now this one's going to go clear over to hopefully our next object will be that movie inventory. 
Let's see if it is. I'm going to be optimistic and put that line there and hope it is. And there's the movie inventory. And the function that I need is this function send view movie list data. So whatever that function is that they've called, that it's called in there is exactly what we need to use as our message. And is there any information we need to send? Not for this one because we're just doing a general request. Uh, we want that movie list. So what will be sent from the movie inventory item will be return that list of movies. And so we'll put a return type there that indicates this is what's being returned so that it has that list of movies. And I didn't get that back all the way. Remember that the return value needs to go back where it was called from, so I've got to get it all the way over to the interface. So that's returning that movie list. Now that that movie list has been returned to the interface, it wants to display that movie list. But where is that function call going to come from? It's actually going to come from interface. Interface knows that once it gets a valid customer, it needs to add the transaction, and then it needs to get the movie list, and then it needs to display it. So it needs to call the display function. So here we get to see how an object can call its own function. right? So it needs to call the display. So it's going to dispatch a message to itself. So it's going to be initiated at the interface, and it's going to come down and return, be sent to the interface. And I'm going to make it so it can call itself. And you can fuss around with this a little bit so that it comes, it looks as nice as it can. What's it going to be doing is it's going to be calling the display. And what's going to display? The movie list layout. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to display that movie list layout. And it has the movie list information, the data, to be able to do that. So there you see what it looks like for an object to call one of its own methods. And this is the process for going through and creating, uh, adding all the messages that are required to make this scenario happen. And so far, we have gotten this far. Right, we're right there where that interface displays the movie list. I'm going to end the video there, but we'll make available this completed scenario, this completed sequence diagram, so that you can see uh, all of the messages that have been added. And so this completed, what the sequence diagram looks like at the completion of step four, where we add the messages.